So now what you'll see is that I have my infrastructure feature class and it consists of four different types of infrastructure at this stage. I've got some buildings, car parks, trees and some walkways between those buildings. Now I've spent a bit of time playing with the symbology so that the colours look good there and now I'd like to spend a bit of time looking a little bit more looking into a little bit more detail in the attribute table. So what we already have here is, is we've got the length and the area as populated when you create those shapes which we saw when we initially opened the attribute table and we've got this field called type which we've populated with those four different categories. Now if your attribute table isn't open remember you can just easily open it by going over to the table of contents right click and then go to attribute table from there. So what I'd like to look at really quickly is just how we can get some information out of this. So first of all, we can just double click on any of the fields and that will sort them either ascending or descending. So let's double click on shape area at this stage. And so you can see that it's now sorted ascending. So we've got the smallest shapes at the top and the largest at the bottom. So if we double click on that once more, we'll see what our biggest shape is. So we can click on that one and see it highlighted in our map view as well. So that's this particular area of trees. So we could scroll down there and then figure out which was our largest building, for example. And we can highlight that one and see quite clearly that that's the largest building. So that's a quick and easy way to sort through your data to have a look at the max and min and those sorts of things. But this is a little bit challenging if you've got lots and lots of features within your feature class. So we might want to have a look at other ways that we can extract statistics rather than just visually observing and sorting and those sorts of things. So the first thing that we want to do when we're going to create statistics of a feature class like this one is to make sure that we don't have anything selected. So that way we'll get statistics on all of the feature class itself rather than just those records that are selected. So let's go ahead and clear that selection that we have up there now. So again, you can either do that in the attribute table or up here in the ribbon toolbar. So what I'm going to do is to create some statistics based on one of these numerical fields. So let's have a look at the shape of all the different areas. So if we right click on shape area, then we can go up to statistics. So this will be grayed out if you select another field that's not numerical. So let's click on statistics and have a look at what we get here. So automatically it creates a graph for us and gives us some information the average, so this is the average size of the different polygons that we've created, the, the mean and standard deviation, and also the total number of polygons that we've digitized there as well. So I've got 46 polygons, which is great. Now this is, this is good information based on all of the features that I have within my particular feature class. And maybe that's not quite so useful, for example, if I want to look at, well, what's the average size of the buildings as opposed to the average size of all the polygons altogether. So if we want to look at the average size of one of the particular category types, we need to go through making a selection first. So let's come over back to infrastructure now and let's say we want to figure out what is the average size of our buildings. So bear in mind the average size of all of our features together is 2738 meters squared. So let's let's go now and try and we, we can create a query to select only those features that are our buildings. So let's go up to the map tab and on that ribbon toolbar you can now see an option called select by attributes. And so bearing in mind that the attribute table is filled with attributes, let's select some attributes. So if we click on this now, we'll get a new pop-up here for geoprocessing and our input is the infrastructure. We're going to create a new selection, so we don't have anything selected already, so it's going to be a brand new selection, and we're going to add a clause. So if we click on that now, and we go to look at the areas where the type is equal to, and pull this down, we can say building. So that's basically going to find all the bits of data there where it says in the type field, 
where the name of that is building. So let's go ahead and add that and let's run that query. And hopefully that's going to come up with some selected features that relate just to our buildings. And that's exactly what it does. So let's have a look over here in our window now. We've got all these selected features and you can see in the map view there that they are all of our buildings. And if I come to the attribute table and show only my selected records, it's showing just those buildings there. So that's great. And so now if we go over to our infrastructure graph that we created before, and let's just make this a little bit bigger so we can see it a bit more clearly, you can see the full distribution of the, of the data set and all the features within that feature class. But you can see now also the contribution just of those features that have been selected. So the statistics on the right hand side are still the statistics of the entire data set. But again, if our question is, what is the average size of the buildings, we need to filter that out. So up the top here, I'm going to go to filter and filter by selection. So that's going to cut out all the other features like car park, trees and walkways and only give me information about the building. So let's hit see how that data changes when we do that. So you can see the graph immediately changes and you'll see our average or mean size has changed accordingly as well. So this is a really good way of quickly and easily seeing some of the statistics based on a subset of your data. And it also shows you how to select features really quickly without manually going through and identifying each of those buildings for yourself.